airbags and towing. Is this like a match made in heaven or is it just opening the door to incipient disaster? Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Australia only website. Card. Now, I got this question from Rex Buckeridge on airbags, towing, all that heavy stuff. He's obviously a piss creakian, isn't he? Anyway, he goes, I've written to you previously and I've found your advice invaluable. I have no memory of it, Rex. Like, it's all a blur, dude. It's just thousands of emails every month. I've looked at your YouTube postings and your website, but have not been able to find any comments on airbags for towing purposes, i.e. not the crash ones in the car. Your comments on weight distribution hitches are great. Thank you, Rex. Any chance you could advise or post your thoughts on airbags, please? Regards, Rex. Okay, Rex, can of worms there. I could start by saying that in the context of heavy towing, okay, many vehicles come from the factory with completely overstated, optimistic maximum tow capacities. Like, if you think it's a good idea to tow three and a half tonnes with a vehicle that weighs two tonnes, with a pig-type trailer, the ones with the central axle groups, that's nuts. And I'll just briefly explain why. I am a broken record on this, but it's like this. Pig trailers, because they have, you know, central axle groups, they, they're like this, right? They're intrinsically unstable in pitch because they go like that. And they're also intrinsically kind of unstable in yaw because they can just roll around, pivot like that, like a Segway, okay? So obviously the restraint of the trailer in those motions for pitching and yawing that comes from the vehicle doing the towing. And the heavier the trailer is in relation to the vehicle that's actually towing it, the less restraint proportionally can be uh, exerted by the tow vehicle. So the trailer, as it gets heavier and heavier, has much more capacity to just fling the vehicle into the path of oncoming traffic or down some embankment on the left-hand side of the road where you can, you know, flip several times and then park at 80 k's an hour into a tree, which is never good, okay? Pretty hard on the people who have to come out and pick up the pieces too in the outback, you know, dust you off with the flying doctor and all of that stuff. Like, you don't want to go there. So my standard advice on towing is that if you limit yourself to a trailer that does not weigh more, than the tear mass of the vehicle doing the towing, then you take all of that shit off the table. All of that risk is basically just negated because the restraint available from the vehicle doing the towing is adequate to keep the trailer under control. And I'd suggest that all of these things like weight distribution hitches and airbags, they're all frigging band-aids that allow people to tow trailers that are dangerously heavy, even if they are technically legally compliant, okay? So in the case of utes in particular, right, there is this sort of body discontiguity between the tub and the cab, right? And that lack of having a a contiguous body between those two pieces of the vehicle means that the chassis rails right there act like a hinge when the vehicle is overloaded. And typically, this occurs when the rear axle hits something like a wash away at high speed with a heavy amount of load in the tray, much of which is cantilevered right off the back at the tow ball. So let's say you're towing a three-ton trailer and it's exerting a static download of 300 kilograms and you're right at the limit of weight for your vehicle, the gross combination mass and the gross vehicle mass. They're all maxed out. You're technically compliant, but all maxed out. So you're going down the track endlessly at 100 k's an hour and you have this big dynamic load input. And the next thing you know, the chassis does this, turns into the harbour bridge, right? It's just bent like a big inverted banana. That's the kind of thing that is possible when you just overload the vehicle, even though it's technically legally compliant, right? And one of the things people do when they're towing, this is how airbags relate to this, okay? 
they hook up this trailer that is heavy. It's like 350 kilos of download. And they've got shit in the tub and they've got their very fat self and their very fat lovely wife and their very fat children and all of that crap that is in the vehicle. So everything's maxed out, right? And they notice, they go, hmm, that's sitting down a bit in the arse, isn't it? Hmm, what can we do? And some retailer goes, airbags. Okay, and airbags give you that visual. It, visually, it looks better because it lifts the ass up and maintains a nice level presentation of the combination when it's just sitting there. But it doesn't really change the amount of load, right? And therefore, it doesn't really change what happens when you hit that big fuck off wash away at a hundred kilometres an hour and. <coughs> banana rise, banana ramification of your vehicle, right? I've seen um, Pajeros, that, which are unibody, right? So I've seen Pajeros that were bent in the roof, buckled in the roof from the same kind of overloading scenario, right? It's just you want to avoid that by towing conservatively. And if you really need to tow friggin' three tonnes or something, then buy an appropriate vehicle for that, which would be, in my view, at least a light truck. So although airbags are not intrinsically a shit idea, what I'd suggest is that they're often used as band-aids to cure a problem that is so fundamental, it can only be solved in two ways, right? Can it really only be be completely negated in two ways? One of which is to buy a better vehicle to do the towing because the trailer's too heavy, or one of which is to bite the bullet and actually tow something that is lighter and therefore a more appropriate weight for the vehicle doing the towing. 